It's done. We've finished our research project and we've defended it or submitted it for publication or whatever needed to be done to indicate the last stage in our project's life. It's now time for the final form. There's a reason we think about research not as a timeline, but rather as a life cycle. This is Esther, a librarian. A timeline suggests that the research project exists in isolation. It emerges out of nowhere, runs its course, and then ends and disappears. But we know that knowledge and knowledge production do not work that way. No project emerges out of nowhere. They all rely on previous knowledge. By thinking of the project as a life cycle, that does not mean that we do the same project over and over. Instead, it's a metaphor that puts the life cycle in the stream of knowledge production. Just as a project depends on many ancestors, at the end, the project generates many descendants. When we're in the classroom, our work often has an audience of one, the professor. But an original research project should aim for an audience of peers, both present and future. That means the project has to be shared. In the libraries, we often talk about work that is fair, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. That's a technical way of asking, how can this work contribute to the knowledge produced by the human race? Luckily, by thinking about the project as a process and by managing our research data and hence the project effectively, we have documentation and structures in place to make sure our work contributes so that the cycle can continue. That can mean depositing the entire project in a repository or just the data itself. Or it can include archiving the materials associated with the project's publication. In short, we have worked too hard on our projects to leave them gathering dust in a professor's file cabinet. We want our work to be reused, and we want to make that reuse as clear as possible. Research should have an afterlife. Let's make it a good one.